Good morning, everyone. My name is Tim Henry. I'm an interventional cardiologist, and I'm coming to you today from Cincinnati, Ohio, at the Christ Hospital. And I am the uh, president of SKY, uh, Society of Coronary Angiography and Intervention. And I wish I was there uh, with you in person. But what I'd like to do is talk about the cardiovascular complications of COVID-19, both the direct and the indirect effects. And this actually comes, this is an overview that comes from a paper that we had in the European Heart Journal in last fall that really I think outlines both the direct effects and indirects, and we're gonna go through those in some detail. So what about the background? What about COVID-19? This is a picture of the virus. Um, actually looks pretty, unfortunately, uh, never before in our life has there been something that disrupted the world as much as COVID-19. And one of the key parts of the, the virus is the way that it enters the cell. And it does that by using the angiotensin converting enzyme receptor which is highly expressed in the heart and on endothelial throughout the body. And so it enters you know, through the respiratory epithelial cells, but there is a tremendous impact on cardiovascular tissues throughout. Now, when you look at symptoms, symptoms have been very broad and they vary and they've changed as we do the variants. You have fever, loss of taste and smell, lots of pulmonary symptoms, including pneumonia, but cardiovascular symptoms are really are also common. And then you have GI symptoms. So it really it can present many ways, including asymptomatic. What about the markers? And I think the most important one is troponin. A patient's hospitalized, 15 to 40 percent of patients will have an elevated troponin. It's also patient, you have an elevated um, D-dimer, which is uh, especially with thrombotic complications. You have an increase in inflammatory markers, including CRP and IL-6. This is a really important slide that shows that patients with cardiovascular disease have almost a four times higher uh, incidence of mortality. Likewise, patients with hypertension and diabetes are at increased risk. So the combination of uh, elevated troponin and a history of cardiovascular disease puts you at very high risk. And this is an early uh, slide from China, but it showed that if you have both cardiovascular disease and a positive troponin, you have about a 70% <clears throat> mortality. If you have just a positive troponin, it was about 40%. Now it's improved some since then, um, but uh, it still points out that the combination is bad and the elevated troponin is, hot, is high. Now, what about the cardiovascular manifestations? This is a very nice slide that really illustrates those manifestations. And number one, the reasons for the elevated troponin are many. You can have a type 1 MI with plaque rupture and an occluded coronary, a standard uh, ST elevation MI. You can also have type 2 MIs due to the mismatch, and that pulmonary emboli or a DVT. And this it illustrates the microthrombi. And what you see is in capillaries, really in the pulmonary bed, in the kidneys, and in the myocardium, you have microthrombi. And that can lead to patients presenting with ST elevation and slow flow. Now, <clears throat> we're going to shift and actually talk a little bit about ST elevation right now. There is very many much effect on ST elevation throughout the world. And what we noticed in the United States very early in March of 2020 is there was a 40% reduction in patients coming to the hospital with ST elevation MI. And that's not because they weren't having things, but patients were scared thing that we saw on social media or on Twitter was that patients were coming in the hospital with ST elevation, but when you did the angiogram, there was no clear culprit. And there's many things that could cause this, but we know that the incidence of that in COVID is about 25 to 30 percent, and I'm going to talk about that. And it's very difficult to look at these two and say which one has ST elevation from a STEMI 
and which one does not. And it, I think it's very difficult to know. So there was also early on a report of STEMI and how the high mortality. And so what we did is we actually developed the North American COVID MI <clears throat> registry. And this is now the largest registry in the United States, or in the ninth largest registry in the world for COVID positive patients. And uh, there were some key things that we noted. There was a more frequent in hospital presentation, more frequent thrombotic lesions, more frequent no culprit. There was higher mortality, but there was a lot of controversy on how to treat these people. And we know. <clears throat> from data that people came in with heart attacks, they had more thrombotic lesions, more stent thrombosis, more multivessel, more higher grade thrombus. Now, <clears throat> in terms of the impact on M, the mortality was 32%. So in summary, they'd occurred more frequently in non-white patients. It was more likely to present with cardiogenic shock and he had a much higher mortality. So this is a really important registry. We keep going. We now have about 15 publications that have come from that. We're looking at why about race. We're doing an angiographic core lab. We're doing an EKG core lab. And really what we found is primary PCI is the preferable choice. Um, so what about the unintended consequences? This is very important. So when they told people when they had the lockdowns and they told people to stay home, there was a reduction in the number of patients coming to the emergency room. Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry about my voice. There was a reduction of patients coming to the emergency rooms and there was a reduction in the STEMI application. What did that, what happened with that? So what you saw was a marked increase in complications related to myocardial infarction, not from COVID, just from myocardial infarction. Guy, we did a survey and we said, my, and what we emphasize, and I think a take home point is, if you have an ST elevation MI, just like other times, in non-COVID, you need to go to the hospital and have primary PCI. So what we did with the crisis in Sky, we really worked on public relations to get people to come to the hospital quickly, uh, even though it's safe to be in the hospital and we'll take good care of you. And it really made a difference. We called it the second still count. But I think it's important in, in all parts of the world to assure people that we can do good care even during the pandemic. So with that, I'll say, oh Lord, here comes circumstances beyond our control. And I'd say that's not true. We now have vaccines, we have good treatments, and we can actually care for people with um, um, the, uh, COVID both with and also patients without. So I appreciate being here. It delighted to talk to you. I wish I was there in person, um, but I hope your meeting is outstanding. And we at Sky are very supportive of you in Bangladesh. Thank you very much.